This is my average size gaming setup. And I made this average size keyboard last year. If you didn't know, I'm extremely insecure about my size. Like, look at this keyboard. I really wish it was a lot smaller. Huh? After using it for a while, I realized that I just wasn't happy with it. I mean, sure, it's one of the smallest, if not the smallest USB keyboard out there, and much smaller than the ones you can buy online, but I just wasn't happy with the size. So in order to cope with my insecurity, I set out on a mission in this video to make the world's smallest keyboard again. And of course, I'll be playing various games to test out the keyboard, while also use it for CADing and different software to test it out for productivity. Because if you have the world's smallest keyboard, you're definitely gonna wanna whip it out and show it off to all your coworkers. Results may vary and we're not responsible if you get in trouble with HR. Like, come on, if someone tells you size doesn't matter, they're only fooling themselves. Before we dive into making the world's smallest keyboard, there are some design changes we first need to discuss. Because there were a lot of suggestions from you guys for the previous keyboard. The top suggestion was to add number keys on the layout, because as you can see, there are no numbers on this keyboard. Huh? You technically can type numbers using the function key and pressing these letters, but this isn't an ideal situation, especially when Steam sales drop and you need to type your parents' credit card number as fast as possible. So yeah, we're going to add the row of numbers on our new keyboard. And while we're on the topic of adding keys, we'll also include other missing keys, like the square brackets, plus sign, and the minus sign. All very important for ASCII art. Another issue we need to address is that this previous keyboard couldn't register the spacebar correctly a lot of the times. And I think it has to do with this button being in the center like this all by itself. Flashback. Oh wow, the spacebar is not working as I wanted to. No, no, please spacebar, please spacebar, please spacebar. Oh crap, no, 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 that's not what I wanted to do. That is not what I wanted to do. My guess is that if we place three buttons instead of just one for additional input and support, this issue should go away. We now have a pretty good idea of what the new keyboard will look like. With all the newly added keys, which includes numbers and additional symbols, we're looking at a 60% layout. But there's still one major question for a new keyboard design that hasn't been answered. How are we going to make this even smaller when it's already really small? I have a quick and dirty solution to make it smaller. No, no, but maybe. For our previous keyboard, we used these small push buttons as switches, but we obviously need something much smaller for our new keyboard. That's where these tiny buttons come in. I played around with them on an old Arduino compatible board, and they seemed okay to be used as a keyboard switch. The total travel distance is much smaller compared to the bigger button, and it's harder to tell if the buttons are fully pushed down. But hopefully, that won't be an issue when we use it for gaming and for other productivity related work. By the way, if you guys remember from my last video, I used this tiny Arduino to turn it into a keyboard. This right here is my favorite thing ever. I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. Last thing we need to change in our design are these tiny diodes that we used on our previous keyboard because they're a huge pain in the butt to solder. Please, you can't make me solder them again. It's actual torture. Please! But not only that, they also take up a lot of space. Sounds kind of weird saying that considering how small they actually are. Bruh. I did some research online and found this chip that fits four of these diodes into a single package. It's definitely a lot easier to solder and much smaller than four of these diodes combined. Ah, crap. I dropped it. Welp, it's a good thing I'm an expert on finding tiny things. Hold up. Wait a minute. Now all that's left for our design is finishing up the circuit schematic and layout. The schematic was pretty easy since the majority of it was just recycling our previous keyboard design. But completing the layout was a challenge. Oh. Initially, I thought I could get away with using only two layers for the circuit board to save on costs, where there are traces only on the top and bottom. And it worked okay for the top layer where the buttons are located. But once I started working on the bottom layer, which had all the major components, like the microcontroller, which is the brain of our keyboard, USB related parts, and the diodes, things were not looking too great and we had to move to the four layer option where there are two inner layers hidden inside the circuit board. Luckily, PCBWay, who's the sponsor of this video, covered the costs and did a fantastic job manufacturing our keyboard circuit board. I've used PCBWay since I was in school and still use it today for both personal and full-time work projects. And they have so many different options for your PCB. Just as an example, you can choose from the basic HASL finish that many hobbyists use, all the way to ENEPIG that are used for more advanced projects like to test and prototype your chips. PCBWay also provides circuit board assembly as well as CNC and 3D printing services. So if you need fast and professional PCBs for your next project, check out the link below. By the way, this is a chip that I designed and tested for my 5G research project. Look how small it is, which goes perfectly with the theme of this video. Everything small, like Nibbles' brain. Huh? So PCBWay did an amazing job soldering these components onto circuit boards. A lot better than I ever could. But on this channel, we build everything ourselves by hand. So we're going to take one of these bare PCBs and start the assembly. Now these are a lot of buttons to solder individually. And as much as I love soldering and sniffing flux fumes into my lungs, I'd like to reduce the total time spent with the soldering iron. So to help us save some 
some time with these buttons, I bought a hot plate which will melt and solder the buttons onto the circuit board. Normally, we'd use one of these soldering irons to assemble the components onto the circuit board. Bruh. This is for normal components, this is for extra thick components, this is for super tiny components like the O201s, and this is for... But using these irons to solder every individual button is going to take a very long time. We can instead place solder paste, which is sort of like a liquid form of normal solder, and let the hot plate do all the heavy lifting for us. And yes, these plates get really hot. We're talking over 250 degrees Celsius. In freedom units for American friends, that's 482 degrees Fahrenheit. After the buttons are soldered, we can finish the rest of soldering ourselves. And we're done. <laughs> Now the next part is what makes me the most nervous. Dealing with software. We're going to program the firmware onto our newly assembled keyboard and see if we fucked up any of the soldering. Because if we did... To help with programming and debugging, I added this ribbon cable connector which easily connects to our programmer adapter. This provides quick and easy access to JTAG, power, as well as other communication pins, and it'll be used for all future projects and videos. I want to say I added this feature to be a good engineer and standardize the development process, but in reality, I'm just a lazy piece of shit who doesn't like doing extra work. Alright, so going back to software, we'll first program our bootloader onto the keyboard. Next, we're going to program the firmware for the 60% layout. And finally, it's time to test our keyboard buttons. Top row is looking good, middle rows are looking good as well, and the last row is good too. Good job, keyboard. And good job, Just Kim. Huh? So we now have a functional keyboard, but how big is it? Or rather, how small is it? It's 66 millimeters by 21 millimeters by 5 millimeters. I can confidently say it's really, really small. I would know. I'm an expert on small things. And for our American friends, it's about the size of three quarters, the length of an American cheese, or just a bit smaller than Loki's head. Bruh. And for all the people that kept saying how the previous keyboard wasn't smaller than a Blackberry keyboard, guess what I have with me? Not only is our new keyboard smaller than the Blackberry one, our keyboard has a lot more keys. So we have a tiny USB keyboard that works, but how well does it perform playing games? Not too well. It's really hard to reach individual switches with my gigantic fingers. Like, look at this finger. It's almost six inches. Huh? I can sort of press on the switches properly if I hold and press the keyboard with both hands like this. But this obviously isn't a good solution when you need to use both the keyboard and the mouse at the same time. Also, because it has no case where there's nothing to grip the bottom of the keyboard, it keeps sliding around and makes it impossible to type. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as fuck, boy. To help us push down the switches more easily, I designed the individual keycaps for a 60% layout so that we can 3D print them and add them onto our keyboard. FYI, these keycaps took a long time to finish and put them on the keyboard. I had to sand and clean each individual keycap as well as glue them one by one on the switches. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. As for the sliding issue, we'll 3D print a case and add rubber grips to prevent it from sliding. Now you may be wondering why the keyboard case is transparent. Well, it's not because you can see the inside of the case and have a beautiful view of the full circuit board. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? It's because of this. Yeah, I added RGB LEDs on this keyboard, and I programmed a few patterns as a start, and will continue to add them later on this year. Check out my GitHub for all the project files. Now that the keyboard is finally complete, did all the new changes fix our previous issues? Yes! Yes! No! 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 The bottom rubber grips prevent the keyboard from sliding around everywhere, which is great, but I'm still struggling to press on these individual switches properly. For typing, I can get around 70 words per minute on my regular keyboard, but on this tiny keyboard, I'm nowhere near my regular speed. Bruh. So if you're planning on bringing this keyboard to work and show it off to all your coworkers, make sure your manager isn't watching you when you start typing on this keyboard. And of course, catting or doing any productivity related work with this keyboard is definitely a challenge. Now believe it or not, it gets even worse trying to play games with this thing. I have to look down at the keyboard pretty much the entire time to make sure I'm pressing on the correct keys, and this makes it almost impossible to play properly. I'm getting absolutely cooked. But hey, at least it has RGB LEDs, right? That automatically makes it a gaming keyboard. Bruh. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and I want to thank everyone on our Discord server where I share behind the scenes and early previews of our projects. If you want to check out extra content or just say hi to everyone, come join our server. And for you longtime viewers, yes, we adopted a new kitty. His name is Loki, and he's the most affectionate and clingiest cat we've ever met. He loves to play and explore, especially inside my office, so expect more of him in our future videos. And I want to again thank PCBWay for all their help in providing us with these extra keyboards. I'm not going to keep these keyboards for myself, so make sure to subscribe, because another keyboard giveaway event, like last time, is probably going to happen again real soon. As always, thanks for watching, and please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. See you next time!